Once you remove the instrument from the box, you essentially have three components for the instrument. The um, autorefractor keratometer, printer, and the docking station. Uh, power cord gets plugged directly into the back of the power station. On off switch for this is right here. We can go ahead and turn that to the on position. Uh, printer hooks to the side of the docking station. That's where it gets its power from. Um, so it's got three little contact pins there and a little hook. So you want to uh, just line that up and hook it on there, simple as that. Power on the printer is right here. Hold that down for about two seconds. Green LED comes on and power is on for the printer. Power is on for the docking station. Typically, the autorefractor, when it's not in use, can sit on the docking station. Uh, if it's um, no charge in the battery, these lights will come on and it'll charge the battery while it sits in there. Uh, to operate the unit, lift it off the docking station press the blue power button these lights all come on the instrument does a self check and it goes into its on position um, on the instrument itself you have an articulating eyepiece here that allows you to take uh, be able to view the eyepiece for taller patients or sitting patients um, without having to uh, crouch down or change your position uh, this headrest here by pressing it allows it to release and that's going to contact the patient's forehead uh, we've got a cantus mark here for lining up with the eye. And we have a center line right here. So if I want to go ahead and demonstrate the operation of the unit here, uh, essentially what I want to do is power it up, which we did. I want to look through the eyepiece and I want to rotate the eyepiece in order to focus what I can see in there. So I'm just focusing now on the actual writing on the little monitor inside the unit. Okay. Uh, once I do that, I release the, uh, the headrest. I typically like to use my left hand and right hand uh, on the patient's forehead to just give me some further guidance. But typically a patient is sitting, I want to come in, I want to adjust my eyepiece up, I want to bring the machine in flat, I look around the side, kind of line myself up, bring this close there and on the center. As you get more proficient, people typically are able to come right up and, and get lined up without doing a lot of searching. In the beginning you may want to just make sure you're lined up. Uh, when you look through the eyepiece, you see the patient's eye and at any point you can press the activation button. That's not a fire button, it's an activation button. You hear the instrument start looking for the eye. So you can do that at any point and I line up, look through the eyepiece. I want to center the square in the middle of the dots. And you hear a single beep. As you focus the circle of dots, you'll hear a double beep. The double beep basically is the keratometry being taken as well. If the circle of dots is out of focus, you'll not be able to get keratometry readings and you just hear single beeps. Uh, once it's done taking the readings, it says okay. You go to the left eye. You do not have to press anything. Line yourself up, get the circle of dots in good focus, and it's that quick, okay? So provided the circle of dots are in good focus, you get a quick reading every time. First step I like to do after I'm done reading is push the headrest back in. Okay, return this to the, to the home position, and now we're going to print the results. You can stand as far as 30 feet away from the printer, hold down the print button, send the information to the printer, and you get your printout. You want to return the unit to the docking station, just like so. It automatically turns off. I did not actually turn off the machine, it turns off itself. Critical thing is do not return it to the docking station with the headrest out because it won't sit on there. Make sure the headrest is back all the way. Um, typically with, there is a, a neck strap in here which will be installed on the instrument. You want to have that on your neck or at least around your hand when you're using the instrument so you don't drop it.